So at least in Edinburgh are completely steeped in history. But did you know about their connection with gin? Come down today to the opening of a new distillery to find out more. Our first distillery uh, is up in Chandwick Place, and we've got a visitor centre up there. But we wanted to put a, a, a working, a, a proper workhorse in, into Leith. Leith is a massive history, massive history with gin. In the 17th century, it was, it was a Leith was a massive port. It was bigger than the port of Glasgow. We used to have great trade with the Baltic nations and, and Northern Europe, and. Uh, from that, gin was imported here. It was called Yennefer. What's the Yennefer gin? Yennefer is a Dutch gin. You've heard of Dutch courage? Yes. Well, Yennefer is what they used to take before they went into battle. The thing about Yennefer that's reflected here is that it was juniper forward. So all of our gin is juniper forward. So the main constituent parts you get in the botanicals is juniper. And then it stopped. There was a, there was a Low Countries war. So we, we made our own. And in the 1700s, there was, there was 400 gin stills in Edinburgh. The majority, 400? 400 gin stills in Edinburgh. A majority of them were in Leith, and a majority of them were unlicensed still. So there's a huge history of, of, of gin associated with Leith, and it's something that we wanted to pick up on. I'm not a distiller by trade, you know, I, and, and I, I think it's so important that we have a quality-led product. So we have uh, entered into a partnership with Harriet Watt, which is the only school of distilling in the UK. We had a lot of American people coming across to, to, to take the course and uh, so we've got a KTP which is a knowledge transfer partnership. Right. So we work with them uh, in lots of different ways. This is our thousand litre still. We're going to half fill this with 500 litres of neutral alcohol. Uh, that was done yesterday and to that we added a selection of botanicals that have soaked overnight which is going to help us to extract their flavour. So we'll open this up and as you can see all the juniper was floating on the surface of the alcohol here. So wow. we've got a, there's a couple of kilos of that in here. A uh, couple of kilos of juniper bit. Yeah, two kilos of juniper for this distillation. Everything else is much smaller quantities. Some mulberries. So we've got mulberries in there. We've got citrus peel floating on the top. We've got coriander seeds as well. Steam coals are going to heat this alcohol mixture up to boiling point, And then it's going to evaporate through this column. And then it's going to come through this area here is known as the line arm and it's in three pieces because we have a vapour infusion basket here and that vapour infusion basket is for the lighter more delicate botanicals so then we've gone through two areas of flavour addition here but this is still an alcoholic vapour at about 85 degrees C so we need to cool this down to liquid before it's gin so this condenser here is filled with cold water and it has a coil inside in a spiral so the vapour will go around and around this spiral coil and the cold water around it will cool it through the pipes and by the time it's at the bottom here it's back to a liquid at room temperature. This hydrometer here will bob in the gin and tell you the alcoholic strength. Basically the further it sinks the more alcoholic it is because alcohol is less dense than water. The reason we've got an open area is so we can take off sampling because uh, what we do is we do a heads and a tails cut point. So all of the good flavour in gin is in the middle section. So the very start and the very end have unpleasant flavours that might taint the batch. You probably get more of an idea of the flavour by holding your nose to it and getting an idea if there's any kind of like off notes in there. So to be a distiller as well, you have to have a clear sense of smell? You, you definitely, yeah, you, you need a little bit of sensory training so you know how to pick up subtle changes in smells. It's a very skillful job. Yeah, it, it does take practice. It, it's not just sitting here and drinking gin all day. You do have to really focus on it. So after the history lesson about length and the history about how gin's made, you're left with something that looks like this. Slash. <laughs>